Hello and welcome AWS users. In this video, we are going to present you a public preview demo of Amazon Aurora Zero ATL integration with Amazon Redshift. My name is Rohit Vashisht and I'm a Senior Altex Specialist Solutions Architect at AWS. One of the biggest challenges enterprises have had is in managing complex ETL pipelines, wherein it's difficult to maintain, has multiple points of failure, and it's hard to keep them current and consistent. At reInvent 2022, AWS introduced the Amazon Aurora Zero ATL integration with Amazon Redshift. This feature gets transactional data of Aurora synced into Redshift with near real-time change data capture. You can replicate data from multiple Aurora databases into the same or new Redshift instance to derive holistic insights across multiple applications. At public preview, that is now, you can use Aurora MySQL 3031 or higher provisioned or serverless source and Redshift Preview Track provisioned or Redshift Preview Serverless Workgroup as your destination for creating a zero ATL integration. Let's look at a demo. Ticket is a fictional website where users buy and sell tickets online for sporting events, shows, concerts, etc. Ticket website's backend is made up of seven Aurora MySQL tables. Now the challenge is that out of seven backend tables, five belongs to an Aurora MySQL database in account ABC and other two belongs to another team in account XYZ. Currently, the only way to run holistic analytics is to run nightly ATL process and run analytics on a daily basis. Ticket leadership team would like to do this near real time for better and quick decision making. Well, the solution is creating multiple zero ATL integrations to bring data from Aurora MySQL databases in account ABC and XYZ both to an Amazon Redshift destination in account ABC. Let's get started with the demo. Log into AWS Management Console. Amazon Redshift will have our destination and Amazon RDS is going to have our source Aurora MySQL database. On Amazon RDS console, open parameter groups on the navigation menu and click on create parameter group. We will create a group of type DB cluster parameter group on Aurora MySQL 8.0 family as Aurora MySQL 3.03.1 or higher is compatible only with MySQL 8.26 or higher. Give your DB cluster parameter group a name and description and click on create. Click and open the DB cluster parameter group that you just created and start modifying the parameter values. You would need to change six parameter values here. You will be turning on enhanced pin log while turning off bin log. Enhanced pin log sends the transaction events without waiting to receive commits, works in parallel on transactions. Preview your enhanced pin log settings as shown and click on save changes. Now create an Aurora MySQL database using version 3.03.1 or higher and the DB cluster parameter group with enhanced pin log. Name it, provide credentials. I'll leave instance configuration and other settings as default. This will create a provisioned Aurora MySQL database for me. I will choose not to create a read replica because it's my test database. Leaving other settings as is, I reach additional configuration where I pick the DB cluster parameter group with enhanced bin log. Proceeding further, I'm going to uncheck the enable delete protection flag as I'm going to be deleting this database later. And that's it. Click on create database. Okay, closing the dialogs. Now the database will be in creating state for a couple of minutes. So let's move on to our destination. So I'm going to be using a Redshift serverless preview workgroup as my destination for this demo. Okay, let's create a serverless preview workgroup. Provide a workgroup name. Proceed with defaults. Now pick a name for your namespace. Provide credentials. Associate an IAM role optionally. And then create workgroup. Let's go back, check the source. Okay, looks good. Check the destination. Okay, looks good. Let's configure Redshift site settings. Navigate to your serverless namespace. Then go to the resource policy tab. Now choose add authorized principles. Here you enter either the ARN of the AWS user or role or the AWS account ID that is allowed to create the integration in this namespace. Now scroll down and add an authorized integration source. Here you will specify the ARN of Aurora MySQL database that we just created as the data source for our zero ETL integration. 
You can also copy this from your Aurora MySQL database cluster configuration. Paste the ARN and save changes. You are done with the first step of configuring your Redshift serverless destination. For the next step, keep the Redshift serverless workgroup name handy. In this step, we are going to enable the case sensitive identifier for Redshift serverless workgroup. The reason for that is, by default, Aurora MySQL is case sensitive and Redshift by default is case insensitive. For Redshift provision, you can turn on case sensitivity either by CLI or from Redshift console. For Redshift serverless, you can turn on case sensitivity using the AWS CLI. Copy the command from AWS documentation. Use your Redshift serverless workgroup and then execute this on the AWS CLI. I am going to use AWS Cloud Shell from bottom left of the AWS console in order to execute this on AWS CLI. With this step, you have completed your configuration on the Redshift serverless destination before you could create your zero ETL integration. Source is all set, destination is ready. Now comes the final step, which is security. This zero ETL integration should only be created by those who have required permissions to create it. On the RDS side, they should have create integration privileges. And on the Redshift side, they should have privileges to create inbound channels. Pick the policy template from the AWS documentation and create a policy in AWS Management Console Identity and Access Management Service IAM. You can paste the copied policy template under Specify Permissions JSON tab within the IAM policy. Modify the policy for Aurora MySQL source and the Redshift serverless workgroup that you just created. You would see errors in your policy. That's normal. We are in public preview. And these policy actions are yet to be added as a generally available function. Give your policy a meaningful name and description and click create policy. Now you can attach this policy to any user or role that is allowed to create a zero ATL integration in your AWS account. You are done with all prerequisites for zero ATL integration creation. Navigate to Amazon RDS. Now click on create zero ATL integration button. Give your integration a meaningful name. Browse your source Aurora MySQL cluster, click choose. From the drop down list, pick your Redshift serverless workgroup destination. Unless you want to customize encryption settings, go ahead click on create zero ATL integration. Your zero ATL integration takes about 15 to 30 minutes to move from creating to active stage. Now that your integration is active, we will try to query the source Aurora MySQL data replicated to Amazon Redshift using query editor v2. Connect to the destination serverless data warehouse and get your integration ID from SVV underscore integration system view. You can also see all your integration activity using sys integration activity system table. Now use the integration ID to create a database from integration. This target database will remain in complete sync with the source Aurora MySQL database in near real time. All right. Amazon Aurora Zero ATL integration with Amazon Redshift for AWS account ABC is ready. Now let's try the same thing in a cross account scenario where our source Aurora MySQL cluster will be in account XYZ and we will create a Zero ATL integration with the destination account as account ABC. Okay, so the drill remains same. I'll create a DB cluster parameter group and I'll name it cross account parameter group. All six parameters will be modified. And then I'm going to create Aurora MySQL database in account XYZ. Everything will remain same except the name where I'm going to clearly call it out cross count AMS. I'll fast forward it to creating credentials, attaching the DB cluster parameter group in additional configuration, and then finally creating the database. In a couple of minutes, we should have our Aurora MySQL cross account database created in account XYZ. Now let's get started with our destination configuration and our required permission setup. Under our Redshift serverless namespace resource policy tab, we will edit the authorization integration sources and add the ARN that we copied from our source Aurora MySQL cluster in account XYZ. Click on save changes and the integration source is added. Now for authorized principle, I'm going to add the AWS account ID of account XYZ, which is trying to create the zero ATL integration with account ABC as the destination. Now for the required permissions, we are going to modify the policy that we created in our destination account ABC. To have the Aurora MySQL database in account XYZ, add it under the create db change data capture stream action. Ignore the policy errors, save the changes. Now for a cross account integration to work, the account with destination data warehouse must allow an external account to be able to access Redshift. 
we create a new role in our destination account with trusted entity type as AWS account. Here we will trust account XYZ and then in permissions provide the required Redshift permissions to this role. Minimum required permission template is available in AWS documentation. Copy and paste the template in JSON tab to create an inline policy or alternatively provide Redshift full access. Here we are creating an inline policy with minimum required privileges and we are going to attach this inline policy to our role. Note the name of this role that you created in account ABC as it will be used for creating zero ATL integration in account XYZ. Now, navigate to Amazon RDS in account XYZ and click on create zero ATL integration. Give your integration a name. For source, choose the Aurora MySQL database that we created in account XYZ for destination, choose specify a different account. Use the AWS account ID of account ABC and then use the IAM role that we just created for cross account access. The Amazon Redshift Data Warehouse dropdown will show you the Redshift serverless workgroup that we have been using as a destination. Click on create zero ATL integration and then wait 15 to 30 minutes for your integration status to change from creating to active. In order to monitor the integration related metrics published to Amazon CloudWatch, navigate to Amazon Redshift console. Choose zero ATL integrations from the left navigation pane and click on the integration links to display activity metrics. Click on either of the two integrations. As you can see in these two tabs, the integration metrics tab contains the table replication success or failure count and also the lag details. The table statistics tab gives you the schema name, table name, status, database, and last updated for that table. And that's not it. You can create data shares and share data with consumer clusters as well. Our integration is active. Let's go to query editor v2 and create database from the integration ID taken from the SVV integration table. As we can see in our SVV integration table, target database is null for one of the integration IDs. We will use that integration ID to create database from integration. Time to validate the sync between source Aurora MySQL and Amazon Redshift destination. I will create a couple of connections here. One for the local Aurora MySQL database in account ABC and another one for Aurora MySQL database in account XYZ. For the Aurora MySQL connection hostname, you need to use the Amazon Aurora MySQL writer endpoint. After the successful connection, Let's open two windows next to each other. On the left hand side, we'll have MySQL Workbench having both our Aurora MySQL database connections. And on the right hand side, we'll have Query Editor V2 for Amazon Redshift Serverless Data Warehouse connection. On Aurora MySQL connection for account ABC, we're going to create five tables and then load data in them. For the other Aurora MySQL connection for account XYZ, we're going to create two tables, sales and listing, and load data in them. As part of the validation, we are going to check our target Redshift serverless data warehouse and ensure there is no existing schema in the databases that we created from integration. All good. Let's start executing the SQLs on source Aurora MySQL databases one at a time. Take a note of the load metrics from your source Aurora MySQL database queries. Validate the same in the Redshift serverless data warehouse destination. As you refresh your serverless data warehouse, you will see that all the changes from the source are getting propagated to the destination in almost near real time. Within seconds, the data loaded in the Aurora MySQL databases was reflected in the Redshift serverless data warehouse. Now I'm going to verify the count for sales and listing table loaded from Aurora MySQL database in account XYZ. Ensure you have selected the right database from your query editor V2 dropdown. So now that we have established that Aurora MySQL zero ATL integration with Amazon Redshift indeed keeps all changes on source synced in near real time. Let's try to run some analytic workloads across the two databases that we created in Redshift serverless warehouse from integrations originating from two different accounts. Using Redshift cross database query, you will be able to run query on sales table joined with tables in another database. Well, don't stop there. Use data sharing, machine learning, and all other analytic capabilities from Amazon Redshift. Hope you like this feature as much as we did bringing it to you. Thank you so much for watching.